Welcome back to Hoops Lounge, where the show with less injuries than every team in the NBA. I'm Mark Griffin, aka Montreal Mark, joined by my man Phil Boileau, Sporting Phil. We're talking Mark Cuban, the venerable owner of the uh, Dallas Mavericks, and today, or last night, he was talking about OKC, the Thunder, who have, you know, Kevin Durant out, Russell Westbrook out, a ton of guys out right now, and he's suggesting that they do the dreaded T word, tank. Phil, what do you think? Tanking. Well, when it comes to tanking, you don't usually think of the top contenders in the NBA in this mm-hmm. light, right? OKC has been pushed as maybe one of the favorites to come out of the West for the last, what, four or five years? But now, there's some new ideas. As you said, Westbrook out, Durant out. You know, they're fighting the good fight, but it's going to be tough for them to really battle with those top teams. You might have them back in the second half. But the interesting part of that comment mm-hmm. was Mark Cuban. Obviously, he has a bit in the game wanting Dallas to make the playoffs and do well, and should OKC tank, obviously this helps the Dallas Mavericks. But what was interesting, when the uh, teams voted for the structure of the lottery system, mm-hmm. uh, we remember how people were getting on the 76ers case for, you know, just tanking for years and years, you know, getting Carter Williams, getting Noel, getting him bit, and they're, look, looks like they're doing it again this year in full force. OKC was one of those teams that voted with them to mm-hmm. keep this system, which is really interesting because you never hear of a top team. One is because top team would never have a shot at a top pick. Mm-hmm. But now, if you implement this idea, they suddenly do. And Mark Cuban mentioned, you know, you can go for one of those Duncan-esque players in the draft to really solidify. But do you do this? I I think um, it, it's, it's tearing me apart because there's part of me that really likes the idea mm-hmm. because adding that other star. But a part of me thinks... You know, there's enough talk about Durant and Westbrook leaving that do you really want them to have a terrible season under their belt to further push that, should I be winning somewhere else? Yeah, I mean, one of the things about the NBA, and it's not discussed enough, is the word luck. Um, Let's go back to the Duncan draft, where everybody wanted this guy. And it happened to be that David Robinson had two major injuries. He broke his foot, something else happened. He basically missed the entire season. And the Boston Celtics badly, 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 badly wanted Tim Duncan's, and the ping pong balls went to San Antonio. I think Bill Simmons still has uh, yeah. has nightmares of, of this draft to this day. Well, that's the nature of the game, and you know it worked out for the Spurs and just kind of a wave of players after that. But uh, you know it's interesting because there's a whole a whole lot of teams right now. You can look at the Pacers, you can look at the Lakers, just teams completely devastated by injuries right now, and. Uh, you know, I think the the system in, in the, how it is now is going to be questioned, um, as you see, you know, Philadelphia, as you mentioned before. And it's a very interesting opportunity for OKC, as you mentioned, you know, Kevin Durant potentially going back to Washington, uh, Westbrook to L.A., whatever, what have you. And uh, it's interesting because Mark Cuban's saying this because he was in a situation a couple of years ago when Dirk had a surgery in the offseason. And they decided not to tank. And they barely, barely got through. The first month of the season was very tough for them. They, I think they ended up finishing the season 41-41, and 41, barely getting in the playoffs. So the question of integrity, the question of integrity of the game, should you tank? I'm a purist. For me, I never want to tank because, you know, the basketball gods, Connor comes back to haunt you, tends to, t- tends to come back to haunt you. But this is interesting for OKC. Sam Presti, Presti could actually, you know, dig in and get another key player, having lost Harden, you know, letting him go. Before. Having lost Harden, maybe having to lose Reggie Jackson, depending how they're going that way. Yeah. And, you know, some people say sometimes it's that one player that puts you over the hump. Some people are hoping mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. Stephen Adams, my boy, mm-hmm. is going to be that guy. Maybe right? Maybe when, they're all, when they are all healthy, mm-hmm. maybe they are a contender. I mean, no one's going to argue that they're not one of the elite teams in the NBA. Mm-hmm. But is the chemistry there? Is the fit there? And also a top pick allows you to make other moves, right? right. Like, let's just say they picked top pick in the draft or, or the top point guard in the draft. Does that allow them to explore the Westbrook world war more? Mm-hmm. I think, I look at the NBA as a business and as a long-term play. And I know it's tough as a GM to look at his long-term play because your contract and your right. and your employment with the team is very much based on your year-to-year production. But I think what, what Philly is doing well is they're realizing, listen, no big player is going to come to our team right now. Mm-hmm. Let's build these, cor- these, these blue chip pieces. Should they develop into something? Should we trade them? At least we have assets, right? Mm-hmm. But OKC is not in that spot. There are, they, they are in a spot should these guys come back. Are they going to contend? I think that you really have to look at the length of the injury because if these guys are uh, Durant and Westbrook are coming back halfway through during the season, what are you asking them to sit out? Mm-hmm. Are you going to ask 
you know, very competitive guys like that to sit out half of a basketball season. Mm-hmm. As soon as they step on the floor, that's adding 10, 20, 30 wins. Mm-hmm. So and ticket, I, ticket sales and shoe sales as well. Ticket sales, it's a shoe business sales. after all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and OKC, as much as it's a great success story, it mm-hmm. is kind of a small market. Right. Uh, so let's not forget this. So they kind of have to keep that momentum running. Mm-hmm. Um, or people are going to uh, hear the chimes of uh, the Seattle Supersonics real quick. Yeah, yeah. But I think in general, I kind of, in, I like the idea of tanking because it's, I, I like the idea of proper rebuilding, but I don't think OKC can do it because A, I don't think their players are going to be hurt long enough. I'm not trying to sound uh, dramatic saying this, wishing they had worse injuries, but mm-hmm. I think half, you know, losing half a season, you can still come back. Mm-hmm. And claw into that seven eighth spot like we've spoken about. Possibly, it's a possible. Well, it's a tough year. West, right? Yeah. You've got the Pelicans, you have uh, Phoenix, Phoenix. A lot of these teams who are, Sacramento, who are Sacramento's playing out of their mind. Yeah, who's playing at a high clip, and can you make up that ground? Because if you can't, mm-hmm. well, theoretically you're in the lottery either way, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. But if you can, well, first off, like you don't have home court at home. You're probably playing the San Antonio's or Clippers mm-hmm. in their house right away. Mm-hmm. Really tough road. Mm-hmm. Although, you know what? These guys are hungry. I, I, I really think that Westbrook and Durant are just tired of losing. One thing I bring up, this is Westbrook's fourth surgery in, I think, 14 months. So, oh, man. It's, that's He's tough. a ticking time bomb right yeah, there. Well, both those guys have played a lot of minutes, right? Yeah. We, we spoke about Kevin Durant playing in the world, taking himself out after. Right. Uh, and at, he said he took himself out because of the Paul George injury. So he said that last yeah, week. So. And, and then I guess the basketball gods yeah, kind yeah. of uh, looked, Carla, in, man. Uh, looked in favorably of that one. So I think ultimately with this particular team, because they're so young and I believe in their up-and-coming stars, like mm-hmm. I think Adams, Abaka, Durant, Westbrook, uh, Reggie Jackson – uh, per, uh, Perry Jones. I I think there's enough talent there, enough young talent. You don't need to rebuild. If this was a team that, kind of like the Spurs, where they were all in their low to mid 30s, mm-hmm. I think I'd be more prone to do this to want to bring that young blood. But they already have the Kawhi Leonard type. But mm-hmm. I think right now, as it stands, I would stand pat. I I would bring these guys when they're ready. Uh, uh, that's the one thing I would say. I'd play the team when they're ready, but don't bring them in early. Yeah. Because even if you don't make the playoffs. You have a chance that number one pick. Not a great pick, but we've seen teams like, you know, when uh, Houston got Yao Ming, they were not at all the favorite. You know, mm-hmm. some things could happen, and and maybe this is favoring these basketball gods. Mm-hmm. Um, I would stay the course. I, I would play it as it is, uh, as much as it's counterproductive to how, you know, most people are used to me talking about teams. Mm-hmm. I, I would stay the course. I, I think you'd have to keep that continuity, the professionalism, and I think that if you did tank, while you could land a great pick, uh, per your point with uh, Mark Cuban, no guarantee number one pick, mm-hmm. no guarantee top two pick. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, what does it do to how Westbrook and Durant view your team? Because you're going to have to re-sign these guys. Mm-hmm. And both of them are linked, as you said, to other teams who really want to create that attractive place. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the, to look at it from Philadelphia's angle, I'm, you know, I'm not, as I said, I'm not a fan of tanking, but I admire the patience they're going about doing this. This is several patience years. Patience of their fans more than well, anything. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Being able to uh, keep that relationship with their fan, which is not easy. And like you said, OKC is a small market, so it, they're not in the easiest situation. As, as Bill Simmons wrote about, the window of opportunity in the NBA is smaller and smaller and smaller. You never know how long it's going to last, especially with injuries, trades, what have you, and, and teams sneaking up on you. So it's going to be a very interesting year for OKC. And as we, as we said, you know, obviously Mark Cuban has a, has something at stake here you know they're 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 heavy competition in the west wild wild west and uh you know the ping pong pulse this 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 spring there there's not exactly the best draft class coming up but you never know uh guys like alfred payton can come out of nowhere and be amazing the diamonds in the rough check this guy out in Orlando. but as as we're saying you know this is a this is a league of, of of just inches and things happen in strange ways but that makes basketball beautiful so phil i'm gonna thank you for being on the show this week Check out the beta version of our new site, hoopslounge.com. Uh, Phil, you want to fill them in on your new show? Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm starting a new episode for especially talking about things like trades and drafts. Yeah. So it's called Fill in the Trade, where. Um, Great title. Where, yeah, we're kind of playing <laughs> off a bunch of words in that, where uh, two of our writers here at Hoops Lounge, one of our new writers, Justin Rowan, so we're going to give him a shout out. Yeah. Uh, we just <laughs> let one out uh, there on the Clippers. Uh, we have one upcoming this week, and one of our other writers. Uh, Michael Grumberg will be part of this. We love talking trades, rumors. That, this is a conversation that people have around the bar table all the time. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I wish my team could get this guy. What would we have to give up? That's exactly what we're going to cover mm-hmm. in an intelligent, concise way mm-hmm. with a lot of points of view. 
uh, we'll wrap this up with contracts, trades, drafts, that whole world, and and create a fun environment. Mm-hmm. So be your own GM. Exactly, be your own <laughs> GM. So that, and uh, we're gonna have a, a plenty of uh, new episodes of a lot of things. Uh, Mark just uh, released one of his four corners, which is a really good look. Yeah, four random thoughts on random things around the league, and uh, I talked about the World Cup effect, which is check out Boogie Cousins. A lot of these guys who played World Cup basketball are playing out a potential of their minds MVP right now. candidate. Yeah, now, he is. He is. So uh, there's that, and my off the wires were. Um, I've been talking a lot to you guys and fans out there, uh, what you guys want to see. So we're going to have some short episodes, some maybe uh, try to keep it around 30 seconds, just a quick recap of what's happening and lots of uh, different links so you can make your own opinion and make your comments. And all that is always found on hoopslounge.com where we try to bring basketball your way in a way that's entertaining, fun, and everything in between. And a shout out to the Raptors, number one in the Eastern Conference for the first time in franchise history. We the North, keep it going. See you soon on Hoops Lounge. Take care, guys.